Hey guys, James again for TFB TV, and this episode I'm calling Gun Speculating. Now what is gun speculating? A lot of you may remember a few years ago when the current administration, an anti-gun administration, was elected into office, there was a general panic. There were people that were worried about the resurrection of the assault weapons ban from 1994 to 2004. You guys may remember that. So understandably, since that's happened before, a lot of people are worried it's going to happen again. So the current administration, uh, when the current administration came into office the first time and the second time, uh, there was a general panic. And what do I mean by panic? I mean gun guys were buying things that would previously have been illegal under the 94 to 2004 assault weapons ban. So what were these guys rushing out and buying? ARs, AKs, magazines for ARs and AKs, 10 plus round magazines for their favorite and more popular handguns. Why? Because those were things that were previously illegal under the 94 to 2004 assault weapons ban and a lot of people saw that ban potentially coming back down the pipe again. So what's the purpose of today's video? Today's video is to educate you guys on the best purchases you could make in advance of a potentially anti-gun administration being elected into office, which is a very real concern a lot of us have right now with the presidential election coming up. So I'm gonna try to make sure that you guys all have your ass in a seat when the music stops. I'm going to separate the Joe Kennedys from the guys loading up into the wagon and heading out California way to find a job picking fruit. Today, gun speculating. Now, as usual, this is guns, not politics. The focus is going to be on the guns in the context of the political climate. I'm not making any political commentary, just telling you guys if you wanna get some stuff that might you might have a hard time getting later if there is an assault weapons ban or other executive actions that could limit your ability to own these things. Uh, that's what I'm trying to walk you through today. So what things should you get that might be banned later? I think everyone is going to universally agree that the answer is in the AR-15. So there are certain things that you wanna buy for the AR-15. There are certain things that you don't need to buy for the AR-15. Let's discuss those right now. So let's talk about magazines. USGI 30 round magazines those are the way to go. Right now you can get them for around $7. And I remember around four years ago during the great panic, uh, people were selling them for $50. So you are squaring your investment. You're buying them for seven, you're selling them for 50, or if you wait until after the election to buy them, you could be paying seven times as much. So right now, USGI magazines are a good bet. And what do I mean by USGI magazines? Just Google it. You've got companies like D&H, OK Industries. They are government contractor magazine manufacturers. Generally, I think it's a safe bet to stay away from non-mil spec, non-USGI manufacturers like ProMag or C Products. Just stay with the standard USGI magazines. Other good magazines to consider buying for around nine or ten dollars, P Mags. Magpul P Mags, Hex Mags, Lancer Mags, the well known, well made magazines. It's a good idea. Buy a case of them, guys. Buy 20, buy 50, buy whatever. I swear to God, you're going to make your money back. So don't be afraid to double down on AR 15 magazines. Now, another maybe riskier investment might be drums, like the new Magpul 60 round drums or the Surefire, the 60 round and 100 round, or whatever the hell they are, Surefire, like the quad stack magazines. I could see those potentially being astronomical in terms of value if there is an anti-gun administration elected in, if there's another panic, if there's a ban. I could see those being worth a ton of money. And I'm going to take a quick diversion here and use this opportunity to discuss niche magazines like the SIG MPX magazines that are $60 right now, MP5 magazines, CZ Scorpion magazines. Those might not be bad purchases because there are so few of them. There are so many AR-15 and AK magazines available today that even if there was a ban, you could see that there's still going to be some availability out there. Now, if you get 
MPX magazines, MP5 magazines, CZ magazines for the Scorpion. You could see there being a genuine panic around those magazines not being available anymore because there's not nearly as many of those magazines as there are AR and AK magazines. So that's a little bit riskier, a little bit more of an investment. AK magazines are also good to buy. Any military surplus magazine, you can get them for 10, 20, $30, depending on how rare they are. Now, another thing that I think is very important to pick up before potential administration change is the AR-15 lower. I think this might be the most important thing that you could get prior to any administration change. Now, a quick note before I start talking about AR lowers. For purposes of this video, I'm assuming that anything you buy today would be grandfathered in for any band tomorrow. So why does that make the AR-15 lower? Just the lower, so important. Well, that's the registered component. So if there is a ban and everything that prior to the ban is grandfathered in, then you are good to go if you have the lower. You would be able to put different uppers on there, stocks, whatever stocks you want, use your 30 round magazines that you presumably bought before the ban. Essentially, if you buy a lower, it safeguards your ability to own an AR two or three years from now or post ban that you would be able to own today because this component's gonna be grandfathered in and that's where the legal focus is going to be is on the lower. Did you buy the lower before the ban? So I would suggest if you only had $50 to spend, buy a lower. If you have four or $500 to spend, I'm not sure if you should just buy 10 stripped lowers or buy one complete AR. Now I've certainly heard anecdotes immediately post panic of people selling five, $600 AR-15s for $2,500, $3,000. I think we all remember that. You saw it on Gunbroker. You've seen it in your local classifieds because the people that are looking to buy them after the fact, the people who weren't prepared, they just want to get their hands on an AR. They don't care if it's mil spec. They don't care if it's Novesky. They just want the AR-15 or the AK-47. So maybe that's a good investment too, would be low-end AR-15. Now let me stop real quick and say that I don't condone functionally scalping people, gouging, price gouging, after a ban. The purpose of this video, it's protective for you guys to make sure you get the things that could possibly be banned or that are going to be difficult to get after a ban. There are a couple of dealers who I just don't buy because of their price gouging practices. I'm not gonna name names, but you guys know who I'm talking about, especially one really big one out there who was a little dirty, if you know what I mean after the last election. But what about the other parts? What about the butt stocks? What about the furniture? What about the upper, the barrel, the ammo? What about that stuff? Now, if you guys remember the last time this happened, there was a run on lower parts kits, stocks, uppers, like really the LPKs, lower parts kits, uppers, and the ammo were really, really hard to get. I am predicting that that would be a short term, even if there were a ban, that would only be a short-term panic because people might eventually figure out that barrels aren't going to be banned. Uppers aren't going to be banned. It's the serial lowers. That's what's going to get you in trouble is if you don't have a serial lower, you're not going to be able to outfit your AR the way you might like. It might have to comply with a ban. Now, a tricky subject is ammunition. And a lot of you may remember the last time that an anti-gun administration was elected into office, there was a run on 5.56 ammo, 9 millimeter, 45, 40, 762, 39, basically anything affiliated with a defense or military cartridge, there was a run on it. I don't think it's the safest bet, the way I would think like maybe buying an AR lower for $40 would be. I mean, an AR lower for $40, like the Andersons, you're not gonna lose money. And let me talk real quick about branding of the lowers. A lot of really popular ones out right now that are less expensive, you can get for like around $40. Everybody's seen the Anderson lowers. There are a lot of smaller make manufacturers that are coming out with lowers and they're pumping them out for $40, $45 each. You've also got the polymer lowers. Now, as a rule, I would say spend the extra 10 bucks 
and just get the aluminum lower instead of the polymer lower. They're going to be more desirable in the secondhand market. They're going to be more durable. And if you ultimately decide to build an AR, you're gonna want the aluminum lower, not polymer. As far as brands go, there's an old saying, mind your ABCs. If you get an Armalite Bushmaster Colt, they're going to command a premium over some of the lesser known, but cheaper AR lowers. Now they probably all came from the same place, let's be honest here. But that said, people are just gonna pay more money for Armalite Bushmaster Colt, Rock River, Nevesky. Now another good and inexpensive investment, Glock magazines. If you're going to spend money on pistol magazines, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the Glock is the way to go. It's used in many platforms, the kel the AR, the Glocks, of course, and Glocks are popular. So uh, a really big one to buy anything that exceeds 17 rounds. I mean, of course, the magazines that are in excess of 10 rounds, those are going to be popular. People are going to be after those. They're gonna pay a premium for those. They're gonna be hard to get. But the ones that are really hard to get are gonna be like the 20 plus round magazines made by Magpul. They're going to be the 33 round magazines made by Glock. Those are really gonna be hard to find. So a couple do not buys, do not buys, do not buy handguns, do not buy handguns. There's no banned features on handguns that are going to be banned with another assault weapons ban as there would be with a rifle. You're gonna be able to buy a SIG 226 today. You're gonna to be able to buy a SIG 226 10 years from now. So I wouldn't buy pistols in anticipation of a ban or a panic. Another do not buy, I would say, would be the more obscure battle rifles, assault rifles, combat rifles, uh, things like the Tavor, things like the X95, maybe the Steyr AUG, the ACR, the XCR, um, SIGs, I think the MCX. I, I would generally stay away from those. It isn't that you're not going to be able to net a profit or that they're not going to be hard to find after a potential ban. I just don't see those as being as desirable or as commanding as high a price inflation-wise as AR, AK stuff, even FALs, M1s, so on. So to rehash everything, if you had $1,000 to spend before a potential ban or panic, what would you buy? Well, if you were looking to turn around and resell it, it might not be a bad idea to just spend $1,000 on a crate of magazines or to maybe buy two lower end M4s, M16s, ARs, or AKs. Now, if you wanna get really dangerous and you don't mind having 25 guns hit you on one background check, one FFL transfer, you could buy 25 stripped lowers because you're definitely going to get your money back plus some if you're buying strip lowers for 40 or $50 a pop. If I had $500 to spend, what would I do with it? I'd probably buy, if I didn't own an AR already, I would buy two strip lowers and then enough components to finish one of them out. You can do that now for $500. So why do I say two strip lowers and parts to finish one? Well, you could build the one lower and you could elect to sell it if there's a panic and it's worth a ton of money and you would still have an AR lower that you could build on later. You wouldn't be left out in the cold because you just sold your only AR. If I only had $100 to spend, what would I buy? I'd buy one lower that I could do with what I pleased later, and then I would spend the other 60 bucks on magazines, 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 magazines. Buy eight USGI magazines, buy six or seven Magpul P mags. If I had $50 to spend, what would I buy? a strip lower in a magazine. If I had $10 to spend, what would I buy? I'd buy a Magpul PMAG, I'd keep it in the wrapper, and I'd turn around and flip it for 50, 60 bucks later. If you had just $1, $1 to spend pre-panic, pre-ban, what would you buy, you cheap bastard? Well, it's a bit of a problem to get something for $1, but let me help you out. One, go to a gas station and steal a squeegee. Two. Go back to the interstate overpass that you live under. And when you're under there, there are gonna be cars that are gonna stop. You squeegee off their windshield. Don't ask them if they want it or not. Just go and do it. If you ask them, they're gonna say no. If you do it, they're going to feel compelled 
to throw you a little change. And now you've got $2. What do you do with $2? G3 magazines. HK G3, PTR91, HK91 magazines, whatever you want to call them, you can find those now for about $2 each. Nobody has a PTR91, a G3, an HK91. Well, people do, but there are not many. There are certainly not as many owners as there are magazines, but people just get freaked out by a potential high capacity magazine ban. And I was watching people actually sell these on eBay, which eBay doesn't do, uh, but they couldn't take them down fast enough. People were selling G3 HK91 magazines on eBay that they paid $2 for, and they were going, buy it now, 10 bucks right away. I watched this over and over and over the last time there was a ban. It was incredible. So you can make five times your money out of two bucks. Thanks for watching. Like I said, don't be assholes. Don't gouge people. Don't make it your business to gouge people. I'm just here to tell you today what's going to be hard to get after the fact and things that you might want to think about and you might want to think about getting for yourself before it becomes really hard to get. Anyways, thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you found this informative. I hope you liked it, and I will see you next week.